last time we were here, last Sunday we started learning on traveling for souls. So today I want us to learn on the Father working through us. The Father working through us. The Father working through us. Are you ready? Okay. Number one, this is what we'll start by saying, that the Father dwells in us. That one we know. We know that God dwells in us. The Father dwells in us. To dwell means he takes home, resident in us. We have become his home. The Father dwells in us. Now today, I will endeavor to move you from, you know, we know this revelation of God dwells in us. Now I want you, starting now, to move from where he doesn't just dwell in you. He works through you. Okay? He talks through you. He touches through you. From today, when people say, uh, God has done something, he will be doing it through you. You'll be available for him to do things and change uh, situations through you. Now, let's read Matthew 1. Matthew 1. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus was in this manner. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, Mary was found with child or with a child of the Holy Ghost. Hello? A CRA teacher said the father of Jesus was Joseph. Can you see how wrong that CRA teacher was? Hello? Talk to me now. They were wrong. We know, if you read from chapter 1, you find out that Joseph was not the father of Jesus. So who was Joseph in Jesus' life? Just a custodian. We're just supposed to watch over this child as he's growing. Now, who was then the father of Jesus? Is what I want to show you. You ready? Look at verse 18. When as his mother Mary was promised in marriage to Joseph, before they came together, that means before they slept together. See? That means no way Joseph will be the father. Then he says, she was found with a child of another father. Who is that father? The Holy Spirit. See, now it's clear from scriptures that this Jesus. Now, from now, basing on that scripture, every time to Tuskia Yesu in the scriptures, I kiss my father, you know who he's talking about. Hello? Especially when he says the father that is in me, you know he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And that is important also for you to know that today the Holy Spirit is not just Holy Spirit, he's also your father. Because he is the spirit of your father. Do you understand this? He proceeds from the Father. Most people don't realize that the Holy Spirit actually loves you. Because most people are so aware and conscious of the love of Jesus. They are aware of the love of God Almighty that sent His Son. They don't take time to focus on the Holy Spirit. Let me give you a quick example. You, huh? Just you, eh? The way you are, with the things that God is helping you, imagine the Holy Spirit is staying with you. Hmm? Me particularly, I have given him some hard time, you know, and he is still in me. What does that tell you? That he loves you. 
and he is not staying with you because you are getting everything right. No. He's staying with you because you are his child. And guess what? He knows you will get better. All right? So he stays present. Now watch this. Let's now jump to John 14. Now after Matthew 1, you will understand that one better. John 14. Let me read verse 8. Let me use the NIV for verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Hello? Anambia Yeswe, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. Okay? Now, this is amazing. If someone asked for us, we want to see the Father. Now we're going to be so focused and attentive to see which Father Jesus will point to. Okay? So you want to get the answer now, which is the Father. Look at verse 9. Jesus answered Philip, Don't you know me, Philip? You missed it. Philip said, Show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, don't you know me? Huh? Then listen, let's read on. Even after I've been among you such a long time. Hello? Let me look up for a minute. Jesus said, the words I speak are not my own. Huh? What does that tell you? When he's speaking like this, it's not his words. It's the Father speaking. Alright? And he says, I've been among you for such a long time. Anyone who has seen me, Jesus, has seen the Father. How can you then say, show us the Father? What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that, do you know that God is a spirit? Do I have your attention? God is a spirit. But he takes on a physical body and that body is called Jesus. Okay? So Jesus is the tangibility of the Father. Jesus is the Father that can be touched with hands. Are you here? Hello? No, I want you to understand something. This is foundational. If, if you don't get what I'm teaching now, a few minutes down this teaching, you will not really get the rest of it. So pay attention. I said Jesus is the tangibility. That means is the physical part that you can touch about God. Okay? Because he is his body. All right? So when as Philip, man using physical eyes, says, show me the Father, Jesus says, okay, you want to see the Father? You're looking at him. All right? Because Jesus is the Father manifest in the physical realm. Huh? Yes. Jesus is God who is spirit taking flesh. So that now the Father is no longer away from us. The Father is in our midst. In fact, look at Isaiah, common scripture. In less than two months, we'll be reading this scripture. It'll be Christmas. And you'll be amazed at how much this Christmas scripture has for you. Look at Isaiah 9. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. Wait for a minute. Who is he talking about? Students of the Bible. Jesus, right? A son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, Jesus. And he, Jesus, will be called. Let's see the names of call Jesus. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Jesus will be called Mighty God. Huh? Then see the other one. Everlasting who? Jesus. How can Jesus be called everlasting father? Huh? Are you here? He can be called everlasting father because of what I just told you. He is one with the father. Alright? 
Let's read on. Prince of peace. All right? He's the source of peace. He's the giver of peace. Now, do you also remember there was another name they gave Jesus? They called him Emmanuel. And they said the meaning of Emmanuel is what? Ah, that one you know. Now, everybody pay your attention. So if you call Jesus Emmanuel, you're actually saying Jesus is God. Right? Because it means God with us. Is that clear? So you are saying Jesus is God and he is God with us. Are you paying attention? Now, moving forward, after Jesus died and resurrected, he is no longer Emmanuel, God with us. Now, there's something more. Because now we don't just have Jesus. No, today we have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to the Father and I will send you another comforter, someone like me. You remember? And he said, this one that is coming will not have a physical body like me. But he will be everything I am to you. But he doesn't have a body. So you say to Jesus, if he doesn't have a body, where will he stay? <laughs> and Jesus said, the world cannot receive him because he doesn't know him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and shall future be in you. Can you see his home? So today, Jesus is not walking physically on earth. You can't see a physical body and say, that's Jesus. But today, there are people who, by being born again, have become Jesuses on earth. Who understand what I just said? So today, we don't say, I'm trying to be like Jesus. No. That's not correct. It's like you waking up and say, I'm trying to be a human being. Huh? You don't try to be a human being. Because that's who you are. It's in your nature. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Most of you now, the, the ones I'm talking to here, you are above 15 or 18 years now. That means you've been walking for how many years? On your two feet. For 15 to 16 years, right? You've been walking. Stable. Now, talk to me. Today when you woke up, did you practice walking? You said, maybe I have forgotten. No, you just got off bed and started walking. Why did you do it so naturally? Because it's something you do as a man or as a woman. Naturally you do it. Because it's in your nature. You do it. It happens easily. Same thing with when you get, you get born again. There are things that you do over years and they become so natural for you to do because that's your nature. Are you understand what I'm saying? So Philip says, show us the Father. And Jesus says, Philip, do you not know me? <laughs> Why is Jesus saying, do you not know me? Because if you've seen me, Philip, you have seen the Father. Hmm? Let me show you how blessed you are. Do you want to see it? Let me show you. Do you remember? Ah, do I have your attention? Do you remember that in the Old Testament, when God showed up in Exodus and was talking to Moses, do you remember that God showed up in a burning bush? God is not a bush. He was in the burning bush. Hmm? Because from that burning bush, he called on Moses. Alright? Now, any other prophet or man of God we can bring from the Old Testament, God appeared to them in forms. So he will come in a cloud like Elijah. Alright? Sometimes it will be a still small voice. Let's even talk about Adam. Adam, all he heard for God was voice. Genesis 3, the voice of the Lord came working. Are you here? So all of them, what they knew, colleagues, all of them, what they knew was just a form, a similitude, a resemblance. And I also want you to notice that God chose to use smoke. He chose to use uh, fire. All right? 
He chose to use burning bush, all these things. Things that you can't make a physical form and worship. You can't make a graven image of smoke. Is it impossible? Are you hearing me? Now. Ah, I want to show you how blessed you are. When he came to our town, do you also remember that after Moses walked with God for years, one day he went up the mountain to pray, Exodus 33, and Moses said to God, I love this. He said, God, show me your glory. Hello? Moses wanted to see God's glory. Hear God's answer. God said, Moses, you can't see me <laughs> and live. Moses said, show me your glory. God said, you can't see me. What is glory and me related? He said, his glory is him. Are you hearing me now? I said, you can't see me and live. He said, I'll put you on a rock and you will see just my back. When Jesus showed up, are you here? When Jesus showed up, the thing had become easy. When he showed up now, he is God in the flesh. Now, you are actually looking at God. Hmm? You are actually touching God and you cannot die like Moses the God said you will die. No. How this happened is that God broke from his realm into the realm of flesh. So Philippians 2 says, Jesus humbled himself and became a human being. <laughs> it's humility to become a man for God. Who oh got what I just said? It's humility. So he broke through and became, you know, with flesh. And now God is relating with us. But something more is about to happen, which is my focus today. Let's go back to John 14. John 14. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Jesus is still talking to Philip. Don't you believe that I am in the Father? Hello? And that the Father is in me. See this, eh? Once you believe this one, it's easier for you to understand that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Alright? Let's read on. The words that I say to you are not my own. What is Jesus saying? He is saying, It's not me. It's the Father again talking to you. So even when I said, Philip, don't you know me? It is the Father still telling you, it's me, Philip. Don't let what you see distract you. Huh? The fact that Jesus is getting tired and sleeping, don't let that one lie to you. He's still God. Huh? You say, why did he have to get tired and sleep and all that? Because he came to die for man and he must identify with man. Hmm? He became so much man, Collins, that it was difficult to believe when he said he was God. <laughs> You're here? Oh, yes. He so became a man that when he said, I am God, they took stones to kill him. That's how much he identified with our weaknesses. That's just a big statement right there. Because it will help you, you know. You will know that Jesus Christ got to the lowest of the lowest of man's nature. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Rather, it is the Father, verse 10, living in me, who is doing his work. This is why we are here today, to learn about the Father working through us. It is the Father doing His work. Verse 11. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. Because if you don't believe my witness, you will believe what the Father is doing. Okay? Now, what is Jesus saying again? Jesus is saying, 
if truly the father is in you Musla, we must see his works through you huh? if people don't believe when you say God dwells in me let God do something through you all right now show them he's dwelling in you hallelujah uh -huh. look at Ephesians 4 Ephesians 4 let's read verse 4 there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called verse 5 one Lord one faith one baptism verse 6 verse 6 is my focus look at it carefully one God and the father of all who is over all who is through all who is in you all hello now that verse 6 I will stay on it for a minute let's use the amplified now verse 6 one God and father of us all who is sovereign over all and who is working through all and who is also living in all let's focus on the second part of working all right now god is so many-sided that he can't use just one man to express himself all right that means when you look at uh, Jerry there, she will express a certain side of God. Maybe it will be walking in love the way God walks in love. All right? Maybe it will be another gifting or empowerment from God. And you look at Usla there, a different one. You look at Collins, a different one. That's how God set us. Because he's so big, he can't have one man express him. So he brings different sides of him and expresses all of them. That's how come when all of us are put together, we become one body expressing one God. Okay? So now Bible teaches it is foolish to compare yourself with yourself. Alright? I can't compete with her because what's given to her is different from mine. Hebrews 12 says, let us run with patience the race set before you. You, your own race. Leave the others. What is the race before you? Run that one. Okay? So this life is about, like I told you last week, finding out what it is I'm called to do. Then run that one. Okay? Now, God's rewards. Are you here? God's rewards are... Uh, are based on his assignment to you. Let me give an example. For example, if God gave you two, two talents and he gave her five, hmm? if after a while she brings six, that means she has gained one, and you bring four, that means you gain two, who has worked more? you because you doubled yours am i right and she just got one now watch this you as people if you compare yourself with her you have four she has six so you'll be thinking she's doing better than me but when god looks at you he's thinking you're doing better than her based on what i gave you who is understand what i'm saying so if god tells you i'm just giving you one talent work with this one and you bring him three and he gives me 20 and I'm boosting with my 20 and I bring him 21 God is saying you failed <coughs> that's how it is also in the house of God you look at people standing here leading in songs preaching and all that and you think those are the people that in heaven will get the biggest rewards <laughs> I have news for you it's not those words the ones that will actually carry the biggest rewards in heaven are those that fulfilled their purposes. Those that carried out their assignment. Hmm? 
Let me not go that direction because I'll say a lot. Uh -huh. It says, two, working through us. So God is working through you, not only on Sunday. After today, every day God is working through you. When you talk, God is talking through you. Hello? Hello? Give me your attention here for a minute. Let's take an example, Colin. Eh? Let's take an example. You are an ambassador. Maybe a US ambassador in Kenya. All right? That means you represent US in this nation. You know what that says? That means while you are in this nation, whatever you say as ambassador is what US is saying. You understand that? And that also means the way you conduct your life, personal civilian life, must carry the same dignity. All right? It must, it must represent the nation that sent you. Hmm? Now, what if, what if this U.S. ambassador, in coming days, we find him doing all manner of crazy things? Guess what we will say? He is embarrassing the nation that called him, that gave him the assignment. And guess what? The president will call you back. You most likely lose your job. Now, Bible says you are ambassadors for Christ. You've come from heaven. Don't live on this earth as though it's your, it's your home. No, you are a stranger. Huh? You're passing through. All right? Now, let me show you. Doesn't matter what things you get on this earth that will give you comfort and all of it. All those things, you can't go with them. No, it's just you and your works that will go to the Father. Hmm? But the things you got and did while on earth is God's way of making sure that you're comfortable operating down here. Hallelujah. Are you here? Say the Father dwells in me. Imagine, imagine doing business with that mentality. Imagine sitting on a public means of transport with the mentality that God dwells in me. You know what you'll be thinking while you sit in that bus? God is seated in this bus. In me, He's seated. Imagine when people look down on you and talk down on you. You won't shed that tear. You know what you'll be thinking? If you only knew who is dwelling in me. The fact that you're talking like this is that your eyes are blind. You can't really see who. It's like looking at Jesus and talking all manner of evil things about you. It just goes to say you don't know who he is. Second Corinthians 5. Can I show that to you quickly? So that you don't have time to, oh, you are so important, you can't, you, you can't cry that someone said, or feel bad that someone said, that's not you. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. Are you here? 5 verse 14. Oh, hallelujah. For the love of Christ controls us and compels us because we have concluded this that if one person died for all then all the people died and he died for all so that those who live would no longer live for themselves but for him who died and was raised for their sake look at verse 16 verse 16 is my focus so from now onward we regard no man from human point of view according look at that this is the amplified according to worldly standards and values eh? so you guys will get exactly what he said so we have stopped hello we have stopped evaluating others 
Uh -huh. We have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Mm. At one time, hello, at one time, we thought of Jesus Christ merely from a human point of view. I told you this. Paul is saying at one time, all I look, when I looked at Jesus, all I saw was a man like me. And so because I saw a man like me, it didn't benefit me. Hmm? Okay. Let me take a different version. The Living Bible. So stop evaluating Christians, your brothers and sisters, by what the world thinks about them. Uh-huh. All right? Or by what they seem to be like on the outside. Hmm, that's a good one. Okay, you look at Collins and what he seems to be like. All right, and you look at another sister, how they look outwardly. You already conclude this the much they can amount to. Are you here? Listen to this. Once I mistakenly thought of Christ this way, he saying it was a mistake. When I looked at Jesus, I thought he was a man. And because he was a man, he could not help me. Let me tell you, the people that had so much fight with this unbelief were his own stepbrothers and sisters. Hmm? Today I hear people say things like, if I was one of his disciples, woo, I wouldn't leave him. When they went to crucify him, I'll be there. Ah, I'll believe him every day. <laughs> I promise you, you might have been Judas. <laughs> are you here let me tell you why because if you dwell with him in the same house huh, he will look so human to you until when he says he's God you have trouble believing him Jesus in fact said he said that I came from above <laughs> every time he said I came from above his own brothers and sisters said, from above. Oh, are you not my brother? How can you say you came from above? And only Mary knew and the father. The, the step-siblings didn't know. And he kept telling them that he is not like them. And they kept mocking him. You know when they finally believed? When he was killed. The soldiers also didn't believe. Hmm? And as he's hanging on the cross naked, when you look at him, he just looks like a man. When he got dark and the earth shook and a voice spoke, they said he was the son of God. And now he hit them. That's not all. By now, his stepbrothers, when they saw all that, they now believe it. But then this guy was different. But while they are still fighting with the unbelief, the third day, someone said, that's your brother. And I said, I'll come back. He's alive. Now that one must have settled it. Because they have seen so many people die. These, their own, died and came back. And that's not all. After he resurrected, Act 1, he's talking to them and he started to go. He told them he's going back. They mocked him. Now he's leaving. Jesus didn't just disappear. No, he left. All of them see him. And guess what? His mother was there, his stepsisters and brothers were there, and they are watching him. And he is blessing them. You know what James, his stepbrother, will be thinking? If only I knew. I was with this man for more than 20 years. I should have gotten as much as I could from him. You mean I was with God all these years and I didn't know it? Huh? Now, that will be the shock many people will have in the last day. They'll find out, you mean God has been in me? <laughs> and I didn't know it. You mean he could do anything through me? In a few verses, I'll show you how you can now begin to do it with him. Are you here? Uh -huh. Are you learning something out of this? Yes. All right. Ephesians, now you've seen in 2 Corinthians 5 from Yona, we no longer look at people based on how they look on the outward. Alright? You do that, you miss the point. Okay?
Okay? Have you ever been in a fellowship or you were invited somewhere by a friend, maybe a church, and the person that they brought up to preach, before he would say anything, you thought, my God, <laughs> they should have gotten another preacher. <laughs> you thought, will this guy teach anything? This small lady, will she say anything? And while you were still, you know, concluding her, you know, finishing everything, she started talking. And now you're taking notes. Oh, you are studying up and saying amen. She made altar call. You actually found yourself at the front. You know, something happened. All right? God started working through her or through him. And it was affecting you. Hmm? Ah. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Ephesians 4, verse 6. Mm. Let me use the Living Bible. And we all have the same God and Father who is over us all. Right? who is over us all and in us all and living through every part of us. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That the Father is living through every part of me. Think about that. Now, if God is living through every part of me, what does that tell you? It tells you every part of me has the life of God. Huh? Yes. That's what it means. In my hands is the life of God flowing through me. In my legs, everywhere, every part of me is the life of God. And it's living. The Father is living through me. That means also, anything I do with this, my body, God is doing it. Huh? He's touching life through me. Look at, look at John. I'll come back to this one. Look at John 5. John 5. 19. Did I say this teaching will be brief? Well, forgive me. It's not turning out as I expected. <laughs> John 5, 19. Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. Jesus replied, The Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing and in the same way. Hallelujah. You see that last part that says the same way? Let me show you. I want to pay any attention for a minute. When he says he does in the same way, this is what it means. It means, colleagues, are you here? It means if the Father takes, say, for example, this place and moves it, maybe he's moving things, and he moves them like this, the son does the same. He moves with the same ability. He moves them with the same way the father does it. He's letting you know what the father can do, the son can also do. But they work as one. In fact, some of your version says, in like manner. Right? That means now you don't say, What would Jesus do? No. That question is answered by your natural actions. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Naturally, you, that's how you respond. Okay? And then your response matches his ability. In fact, look, look at. Oh, hallelujah. Usla. 